Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Timster. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add simple RTS movement to your games in the Blender Game Engine. So right here, if I press P and move my mouse cursor to the top of the screen, you can see my view changes, and the same goes for all sides of the screen like this. And then when I get to a border over here, I can't go past it anymore, which means my player won't be able to see past here. Okay, so this works in all directions obviously, and it's a technique that is used in a lot of popular games. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you'll have to do is have Blender obviously, and then go to File, New, and open up a new Blend file. If you don't already have Blender open, go ahead and open it up. Then up the top here, change it to Blender Game, under Shading, GeoSL, and an animation frame rate of 60. Then what we're going to do is scroll up the top here and under the object data tab we're going to click in here and call this camera control. Camera control. Then we're going to scroll along and under the physics we're going to select sensor and we're going to click detect actors. Just for now we'll leave it visible and also collision bounds we want checked. Then in the 3D viewport, I'm going to press numpad 7 to go into top view, then press Control, Alt, and numpad 0 to go into my top view again, but with the camera. Then what I'm going to do is press Shift A, and here I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to move this down to the bottom of the camera, so roughly like that. Then I'm going to press S, X, and scale it on the X axes. Okay, so roughly over the sides as well. Then over here in the physics, I'm going to select actor like that. And you can select collision bounds if you want to, but it probably won't make much of a difference. Then what we're going to do is up the top here, change it to game logic. And we'll go back into camera view by pressing numpad zero, like so. Then over here, we can call this uh, move down, like that. And then over here, we'll add a mouse. And then here, we'll add a mouse over. OK, and this needs to be on a true pulse. Then we'll hold down Shift, and in our 3D viewport, we'll select our sensor over here. So make sure that this is orange and this is yellow. Then press Control p and Parent, like that. So we're parenting this to our cube. Then on our main control or our camera control, what we're going to do is over here, add a motion and then hold down shift, select our sensor over here, add another and controller to our camera control and join this up to the sensor. Okay, and join that up like so. Then here what we want to do is have the camera going downwards, so negative y. So in here I'll do negative 0.1 for the speed and then we can minimize that. Okay, so that is one side done. Now, before we do anything else, we need to parent our camera here. So I'm going to select my camera, hold down shift, select my cube, and press control P and parent again. Okay, now we'll press numpad zero, go back into our camera's view, then A to deselect everything. We'll select our plane here, shift D to duplicate, and then G, Y, move it on the Y axis, and we'll move it over the top like this. Okay, so this will be the top one. So instead of move down dot o one, we'll rename this to top. So move top or move up. Okay, and then again in the physics, that should be all fine. And now what we want to do is we don't actually want it joined to the same end controller. We want another one. So join this to here. Then hold down control and drag over this one over here. OK, and that will cut it out. Then on the camera control, or our main cube here, we'll add another motion. And this is going to be the opposite to this one. So this one was negative 0.1. This one's going to be positive 0.1. Join that one in. Minimize those. OK, and now we just need some for the sides over here. So I'm going to select both of them and press Shift D to duplicate and then RZ90. Okay, so that duplicated both of them and then rotated them on the Z axis 90 degrees. Then I'm going to press numpad 0 to go into my camera view again. Select this one over here, move it over like that. Then press SY to scale it on the Y axis until it's roughly the same size. Do the same over this side. Okay, over here, SY, and drag it in. 
To move it in small increments, hold down shift and you'll be able to scale it a lot slower. Okay, so something like that. Then on this one, first thing what I'm going to do is instead of move up, I'm going to call this move left and the other one over here can be called move right. Then I'm going to select my main cube over here, add two motions again. This one we should probably call up and this one over here we'll call down. This one over here can be left and this one can be right. Okay, and then here we'll add two and controllers and for the move left, join this to this one over here and move right, this one over here. Again, these are joined up to the wrong ones, so I'm going to hold down control and then drag over this one here. And for this one, I'm going to hold down control and drag over this one here. And then on this side, we'll join these up like so. And for us to go left, it's going to be negative x, so negative 0.1 and to go right will be positive x, so in that direction same as the arrow, and so that will be 0.1 okay, and minimize those and then the next thing we need to do is select our sensors over here and go to the physics tab and we're going to select invisible for all of them so we don't have to look at them then I'm going to change my setup so I'm going to bring this camera down so it's a bit closer and then I'm going to take my cube and move it up a bit. Now as you'll notice if we press numpad 0 now we can't actually see anything properly so what we're going to have to do is scale all these inwards to match the camera so numpad 0 and then S to scale and we want to drag these down to where they were before okay so S again if you need to and something like that just so we have those same dimensions around the outside so this setup looks fine now we need some boundaries so what I'm gonna do is over here press shift A and here I'm gonna add a cube this is gonna be my boundary oh, boundary and it's gonna be my boundary for going down so in here I'm gonna add a game property called boundary down and then I'm going to move this over here press SX scale it on the X axis and then SZ scale it on the Z axis okay move it up and basically what we want is for it to collide with this so I guess we don't even need this bottom here we can scale it on the Z axis make it fairly thin and just enough so it can collide with our cube here Okay, so this is the limit here. Then on my sensor over here, on the camera control, what I'm going to do is add four collision sensors. Now if you click in here, you can see collision is underlined. So we can click in here and press C. And that will add a collision for us. Okay, so here's four. This one is going to be boundary down. This one will be boundary up. This one will be boundary left and the last one will be boundary right okay and these are all going to be on true as well and so we'll minimize those actually we'll probably call them what they are so this one's down this one is up this one's left and this one's right okay so minimize all those and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some and controllers so click in here and you can see A is underlined so we can just click in here and press A and it will add one for us then join them all up like that okay and then what we're going to do is this one boundary down we want to join to motion up and collision with up we want it to go down so the forces are opposing and it doesn't move then the same for the bottom two, so when it's going left we actually want it to go right and when it's going right we want it to go left okay so minimize these ones here and that should be all set out now this one over here the boundary we might want to go along to the physics tab and it will be static we want actor selected and also collision bounds okay then what we're going to do is press shift D to duplicate and move it over here so GY to move it on the y-axis otherwise you can just use these arrows to drag 
and we're going to move it roughly over here somewhere. Then, once you're happy with it, over here we'll change this to boundary up. Okay, and then here I'm going to hold down shift and select my first boundary. So select this one, hold down shift, select the other boundary, then press shift D to duplicate, and then RZ90. Rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axes again. Then over here, this is our left sensor. So instead of boundary up, it will be boundary left. And this one is right, so same thing. Instead of boundary down, it will be boundary right. OK, and I think as long as these are lined up so that our cube will be able to hit all of them, that should be about it. That should be working. So to make sure we can see what's happening, I'm going to press Shift A, add a plane, and this is going to be like our floor. So I'm going to press S, make it nice and big, and I'm going to give it a random texture. So give it a new material here, turn off specular, go to the texture tab, click new, choose image or movie, scroll down, we want UV, and then click open, choose a texture of your liking, so maybe just this one over here, and then go to textured down here and press tab U and unwrap and then tab again to go out of edit mode and there you go, maybe we want a bit more light so click on the lamp here, go to lamp settings and change it to hemi okay and press alt R to get rid of the rotation then what I'm going to do is press numpad 0 to go into our cameras view zoom in a bit and then press P now we can move along but we can't see our cursor at all so one thing we have to do is go over to the render settings over here scroll down and we need to select mouse cursor okay and then one more thing the sensor is way too big so what I'm gonna do is over here go to the physics tab and make it invisible like that then I'm gonna press numpad 0 and press scroll out a bit press P and now we can move from side to side and we can move up and down as well and so now if we get to our boundary oh, you'll see we go right through it but we can't get back in so I think we may have reversed the directions accidentally so over here as you can see when it collides with going down what we wanted to do so it's not allowed to go down any further we have set it to go up okay which is negative y which is actually going backwards so in the wrong direction so what we want to do is get rid of that hold down control drag over it and instead join this up to down do the same over here join this up to the top now we'll press numpad 0 press p try it again go to the bottom and we can't go past it now we'll try this with the side and that seems to have worked fine Okay, so that is about it. That's how to get the boundaries working in a basic RTS system. Obviously, in your game, you won't have these being visible. Uh, these will be invisible as well, so we'll make them all invisible. And your player just won't be able to look in that direction. So this is the main top-down movement done. However, there are a lot of games very similar to this, like League of Legends or Dota, where you actually have the camera slightly tilted looking down at the player, and you're still able to move the mouse cursor around. So to achieve that, what we can do is select our camera, hold down shift, and also select our mouse sensors. So all of these ones over here. So we can press Z to go into wireframe, make sure we have them selected. Then what you can do is press RX to rotate it on the X axis and maybe move it forward a little like that, okay? But that is basically it. Then you can also choose what angle you want and move around until you're happy. And so now maybe we'll go back to texture view and we'll add in an object to see where we're going. So a monkey move the monkey over here, now if we press numpad 0 and press P we can move across the screen and we can look at our monkey so there we have it guys, that is how to get basic RTS movement going in the Blender Game Engine hope you enjoyed the tutorial, if you did be sure to leave a like, comment or share all of that stuff is greatly appreciated if your one didn't work out there will be a link in the description to a working copy if you want to go ahead and get that 
But otherwise, again, hope you enjoyed the tutorial, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.